Hi, I'm Gavin Glixman. Joining me today at Sun HQ is Arsenal legend Ian Wright. The relegation dogfight has well and truly heated up now. Paolo Di Canio is in charge at Sunderland. It came out of the blue. Mm. What do you think about Paolo at the Stadium of Light? Well, you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm pleased that he's got a, a Premiership job. You know what I mean? Good luck to him. You know what I mean? Uh, he, he hasn't had to wait long. I think it's what, something like 75 games, League Two and then League One, and they've done well in both of them. So he knows about success. Whether or not he could do that uh, at Sunderland, only time will tell. I've got to say, they looked very organised at the back. Uh, I feel that Sessignon and Adam Johnson and maybe McLean's, Larson, the, the offensive guys, they need to, to maybe step up their game a bit because for a bit there they had Chelsea on the hop, on the up, but I thought that they, they, they kind of faded away. Paolo did indicate and, 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 and kind of mention in the press conference I was there that they, the team ain't fit which is something that new managers always seem to say. But at the same time, I did feel like Adam Johnson, Sessegnon, um, I felt sorry for Conor Wickham. I thought he battled well. Um, if they can get some service into the box, if they can step their games up, I could see them sneaking out of it because I do believe that Stoke are in free fall. And if he can keep them out of it and then he can get his, he can imprint his kind of personality and what he wants uh, for Sunderland, he could do very well. But in respects of him getting the job as early as this, it's one of those where you think, well, good luck to him. But like, um, you know, it's, 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 it's one of those where you, people look at it and say, well, why does he get a job um, of that stature already? Because they, they, they're taking a chance on him and his character, I suppose. From a fan's point of view, it's always a bit baffling to hear a manager come out and say his players aren't fit enough. Yeah. Surely they must be. Well, no, nah, it, it's not that easy. Have, um, in respect, so because maybe when Martin O'Neill was there, they were working on different things. They did at this stage of the season. We're coming into the the last like s seven games or whatever it is, and maybe they're, they're on the wind down because they're playing playing games and they're working on stuff in training. They're not doing hard fitness work, um, so it's, it's it's very easy to to lose fitness if you're not doing a certain amount of um, running and that. But whether or not that's going to kick in in time. For them to all get fit as a unit is a whole different story. But yeah, some some managers. I remember when Wenger came to Arsenal, um, we had a whole different regime. And after when we started for the first four or five games, Tony Adams and Lee Dixon went to see him, and he said we just don't feel fit enough. But uh, by that time, we was taking the B6, B12, vitamin injections, creatine, and he says just just we're, we're going to do our stuff, jumping through the hoops and going through the stuff, and it will all kick in, and it did. So it's p different managers have got different methods of, of, of fitness and, and c getting the, t the, the team fit. So if I put you on the spot now, which three clubs will be going down? Um, I'd say QPR, um, Reading and um, Stoke. I feel like Stoke uh, are, are, are going to struggle. They've got some tough games coming. Um, and, it, and, and, they, and, and Tony Pulis doesn't seem to have that, that, that intensity in him at the minute. I think Martin O'Neill looked the same. He didn't have that intensity. There was like they know something. Something's going on here, what they know, and they, you can almost see that they haven't got that intensity. When you see Tony Pulis' interviews, it's not that same passion about maybe him being wronged or whatever. It just seems like there's a, there's a, there's a kind of like a, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for, a, a resignation uh, uh, to some extent. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh, but that's just me. That's just what I see. So hopefully it doesn't happen because I think Tony Pudis has done fantastic for Stoke. And maybe you now he's getting a lot of stick for the way they play because it's not going as well as people like. They, they were OK when they were mid-table, challenging in and around the top six that, um, when they, that the way they played, when they had the long throw and it was all happening. But now people seem disgruntled and not happy with the way they're playing because they're down the bottom. And maybe this could be the season where it, they, they, they might fall out and then we'll have to see what happens there. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but if you, if you put me on the spot like you just did, I'll, I'll have to throw Stoke in. Harry Redknapp has said he'll stay at QPR even if they do go down. Yeah. He's surely going to have a massive job in the summer, though. If they are relegated, there'll be players on massive wages that will want to go. Will they come back up? Well, to be honest, um, I, I, I feel that they, if he can keep the players, they will. Um, it would be nice to see the players stay and try and get them back in there. Um, and then Harry could start from a fresh season in the in the Premiership. Um, but you know, you know how players are. You know, uh, 
I think QPR, when you look at their squad, uh, they're, more, they're more than good enough to, to easily bounce back, no problem. If they kept those players, they'll easily be the best in the championship. But they've, they've proven they can come out of that league playing decent stuff. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's great that Harry's come out and, and said he'd stay. Why should he leave? You know what I mean? He's got a job to do. I think he's, uh, he's somebody that can get that team going. And uh, if he does then, and he can keep those players, then I feel that they will be a force when they do come back because this season will stand them in good stead. They've, they've shown the kind of form, Gavin, where that they could have been the people to, to ease themselves out of it. But you look at Wigan, um, who are in the bottom, thir bottom three at the moment, and they look to me like a team that's experienced in coming out, and I think that they most probably will. They've got the game in hand. They're very experienced around the teams, beating the teams around them. And um, I feel that we're going to most probably come out of it. But going back to the QBR, I'd, I'd love for them players to stay. And if Fernandes can pay them that kind of money in the, in the championship, like Newcastle. Newcastle still were paying Colaccini, I think, what is it, £80,000 a week at the stage. At that stage, he came back and he's been a fantastic player for him. You know, if he can afford to do it, then do it. Keep him there and get him to bring him back into the premiership. Righty, brilliant. Thank you as always for your time. A pleasure, Gav. Pleasure.